Lesson 12.1, Modeling Inverse Variation, and Lesson 12.2, Graphing Rational Functions. Let's back up. What type of behavior have we modeled so far? Well, we've done linear, of course. We've done quadratic. And then just recently we did radical, square root. Now we're going to start a new one. It's called inverse variation. An example of inverse variation is something you've seen in physics, f equals ma. If we solve for a, we get a equals f over m. We would be able to say acceleration and mass have inverse variation. And the reason we can do that is one is on top of the fraction, one's on the bottom with an equal sign in between. So the classic example is y equals 1 over x. Now it's very rare that it's actually 1 over x, so we write it as y equals k over x, where k is a constant. 2, negative 3, 1 half, whatever. That's inverse variation. We'll graph it so you can see what it looks like, but for now, the best way to understand it completely is to say which one of the following is inverse. Well, solve for y. y equals 4 over x. That's inverse. y over 2 equals x. Let's get y alone. Multiply by 2. Multiply by 2. They cancel. y equals 2x. That's direct. They're both on the same side of the fraction on opposite side of the equal. Here over here, on the left, the x is on the bottom, the y is on the top, there's an equal between them. y is on the top, x is on the top, there's an equals between them. Makes it direct. And this one's a trick question. This is neither. And it's neither because you can't have what we've been calling a b value. And what I say, no y-intercept. In order to be inverse variation, they have to go directly through the origin. If it's up 3, left 3, down 3, and it doesn't go through the origin, it's neither. So, what's the graph look like? As in the last few units, we're going to do a ballpark graph. We're not going to try and make it look perfect. And before I do that, what could we put in here that would blow up our calculator? If we had it in there, the calculator would say, eh, can't do it. And that's zero. So we write down this way. We call it an excluded value. We'll deal with this more later x can't equal 0, so I actually can't have a line that crosses 0. It won't work. It has to be something else there. And what we call it is an asymptote. Asymptote is a line that it runs up closer and closer and closer to, but it never actually gets there. So everywhere we go down the graph to the right, 
the distance between these two will get closer and closer, but it'll never actually touch. That's an asymptote. Anybody want to take a guess before I draw it in? What's going to happen when I put a negative out front? The same thing that's been happening over and over. If it's up to the right, it'll flip down. If it's down to the left, it'll flip up. So that's what y equals negative 1x looks like. That's what y equals 1 over x looks like. You could put them in your calculator and check it out. Or better yet, just memorize them. Make your life a lot easier if you know what they're going to look like before you go to graph them. Flipping over. Now we're looking at y equals 2 over x. What does that 2 up there do? And I can never remember, so I like to graph it. Let's see what it looks like. The parent function will be here. And that's y equals 1 over x. And the 2 makes it vertically enhanced. Brings it out further away from the axes. So that's y equals 2 over x. Vertically enhanced. A better math phrase might be stretched vertically, things like that. But I like vertically enhanced. Somebody came up with that. And I give them credit. If this is the parent function, y equals 1 over 2x will be vertically compressed. It'll be inside. It'll get closer to the x and y axis. This is the parent function. x plus 1 does something very similar to the last unit. It moves everything to the left one. My bad. So now, we're in the same quadrants, but we're over further. That's y equals x plus 1. And hopefully you can guess what happens with the plus 3. Here's our parent function. Plus 3 is just going to move it up 3. So now we're here. And we're here. Confusing stuff, and as you can see from all I've drawn, it takes time to actually draw it out. Use your calculator. Put it in on one color, one type of line, and put the other ones in another line. Most of this is review. The graphing is the same in every unit. Vertically compressed, vertically enhanced, shifts left, shifts right, shifts up, shifts down. Try and put it all together. Now for some easy math. How do you actually write an inverse variation equation? It's not that hard. I tell you y varies inversely with x. You can write that xy equals k. This is the equation I gave you before. You'll say, whoa, 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 that's not what I saw. Fine. xy equals k. Divide both sides by x. You had y equals 
k over x. That's the equation I showed you. It's the same equation. It's just a lot easier to deal with. So what's the equation if y equals 6 when x equals negative 3? Simple. Negative 3 times 6 equals k. k equals negative 18. y equals negative 18 over x. It's that easy. Just remember this part here. It'll save you a lot of time and effort. So how do we know if a data set, rep data set represents an inverse variation? I just showed you. The formula was xy equals k, which is the same as y equals k over x. <coughs> k over x. We don't want to use this. We want to use this. We just multiply down. That's x. That's y. Let's see if we get the same number. Negative 5 times 2.4 equals negative 12. Negative 3 times 4 equals negative 12. 4 times negative 3 equals negative 12. 8 times negative 1.5 equals negative 12. Negative 12. Yes. It's inverse variation, and better yet, I can write the equation, negative 12 over x, because that's the k value right here. It's a fair amount of material. It's not that complicated. You have to practice the graphing, and then you just have to get used to these two equations, x, y equals k, and y equals k over x. Get cracking. Good luck.